on right now we are ready to sit at the feet of the lord and to just glean from him my goodness prophetically what the lord has to do uh what he's doing in our lives and what he will do in our lives you know just moments before i we came on and please while i'm speaking uh, please like and share let's get everybody on let's get everybody locked on amen but you know, while I was here, just, just moments before we came live, the Spirit of the Lord just revealed to me. He says, listen, I need you to speak. When this series is over, because we're doing a four-part series right now, he says, when this is over, I need you to speak to the people about my goodness. Uh, he wants us to know about his goodness the goodness of god shall be revealed to us you know the lord is just pouring out his heart to us you know it is for those who have ears to hear will hear and will discern and will understand what is truly truly happening in this season so let us be excited come on let me get the thumbs up let's get those likes let's get those loves let's begin to share because god is speaking to us and you know he he loves us so much that this particular series that is that he's doing that he's really revealing to us it's so tangible it's so practical we can literally take this and apply it to our lives right now because we have to understand it is prophetic it is to prepare us for a time to come every message and every series that you would see that i would do it is that the spirit of the lord would download it is for a time to come amen and so I was listening last night uh, just for a, a little moment, a, a couple minutes uh, of a series that was done all the way back in 2019, uh, was it? And, you know, and in that message, the literal words that were said was that this that I'm going to say is for a time to come. And guess what the teaching was? It was its transition time. And how many of you know that time came? And that time is somewhat still here, but we are coming out of the transition saints and we're coming into that transformation that the lord is taking us into in the transformation in the geometric transformation we are in a translation god is calling us to move he wants us to do something that we did not do before if we were praying a little bit he wants us to pray more if we were reading the scriptures a little bit he wants us to read the scriptures more you know this is what movement means now We've been doing a four-part series entitled Raw Reality. And of course, it's analogous in nature. And the Lord would use economics as the theme to describe what he wants to do with us. Amen. And so this, it, this is the third of the fourth part series. Okay. Now, I know, I know when we, when we hear these things, we think, oh my goodness, what is the Lord doing here? I want you to say something. Every time the Lord brings a particular theme, it's for a reason. And I really feel in my heart that the reason the Lord is bringing the analogy of economics uh, to explain what he is doing or what he is about to do within the nine the next nine month period i believe very firmly that it is for our ears to be opened come on for our eyes to be opened so that we can literally receive the download of a heaven that we would be a prepared people for a time to come okay now in this nine month period we're talking about coming to the end of passover and at the, by the end of Passover in 2022, we would be definitely prepared. We would definitely have that foundation. And I'm speaking in the natural and in the spirit. A natural foundation, a spiritual foundation to prepare us and, and coming to that, uh, that apex by Pentecost next year where the Lord is really going to settle us my goodness in business settle us in in concerning our family concerning a lot of things of what it is he has for us to do i need you to understand that everything that i'm talking to you about is times and seasons okay i'm not just bringing a sermon i'm not sermonizing come on the lord would not have me sermonize for you today it is not just a sweet message for us to say amen hallelujah it is literally something for us to download it is very important when the spirit of the lord is doing these kinds of teachings for us to really get uh, very very importantly get uh, a pen a paper and write down what he is doing 
you know, in, in, in Trinidad uh, and Tobago today, uh, there is there is this the celebration of emancipation. And, you know, there's a lot of noise going on. But, but praise God, you know, you're not going ahead. Praise God. So let me just go on by saying this to us. Before I begin with today's message, which actually got me extremely excited, by the way, just to say. But before I begin today's message, there is something that was said uh, last week that I definitely need to repeat and what was said was that there is a breaking away period that is happening there is a breaking away and we have got to choose what breaking away part we are in there is a breaking away my goodness from deception which i pray that we are in the positive breaking or there is a breaking away from truth which unfortunately the pervasive propaganda that's out there there are there are too many who have succumbed who have given in to such a breaking away there is a breaking away because there is a translation there is a movement there is a shift in location and so whether we like it or not there is a breaking away that is happening we have to choose which breaking away we are going to be a part of that come on saints you we have to choose today i do not want deception father help me that i do not fall into the trap of deception if you go all the way back to the first series of this uh the first message of this series it dealt very much on deception now what is the four-part series if you remember it's r d research and development it's quality that was the second part today we are doing production and the last one is sales because we we established that the lord was using economics so the first one we looked at prad which is come on prophetic uh, prophetic research and development remember that one last week we looked at peak that the lord wants us to peak in what we are doing prophetic excellence and quality and today are you ready for today i know the excited ones i have some young students some children who will sit and a half and listen to the message listen to me there, there, there are three children that i know of i'm talking i'm talking children under 10 that will actually sit down and listen to these messages and take notes under 10 years old you better hear what i'm saying precious ones and the third message for today of course the theme is production the the lord is going to give us ppe it's ppe and ppe is prophetic production economics write it down for me prophetic production economics come on we got to know what what the spirit of the lord is saying to us today now we know in the natural ppe refers to personal protective equipment okay and it is a very very much used right now because we are in a pandemic and so the the frontline workers would wear this protective uh, garment uh, that would that would hopefully keep them uh, in somewhat protected from that very uh, terrible uh, virus right now COVID-19 and uh, so it is likened unto an armor as we would have our spiritual armor uh, in Ephesians right and uh, so the PPE is uh, meant to be uh, a protection and uh, so here we are right now that the Lord is giving us a protection and the protection is what he's going to prepare us for for as prophetic people because as prophetic people he's about to prepare us for a promotion and in the preparation for the promotion we have to know the protection that is required and the protection that is required is ppe and so the lord is preparing us for the promotion by the protection of ppe come on you better hear what i'm saying right now and so here we are as the as the prophetic prophetic production economics god wants to teach us some things today don't lose me today i'm going to speak very very simply don't don't say oh my goodness i don't know what the, what you're saying today oh no i'm going very simple for you today because we are speaking about production economics now now if i speak to you about economics come on we buy and sell things all the time okay so economics just simply has to do with consumption it has to do with production it has to do with wealth come on buying and selling that's all economics right but if i'm speaking specifically about production economics in economics production has to do with that which is tangible 
raw materials. It has to do with that which is intangible, your know-how, and taking that into goods and services, consumables, that which somebody would purchase or that which somebody would use. Are you understanding me? So therefore, in looking at it, production is a process just like when we spoke about quality last week if you would remember when we spoke about quality we said quality is a process when we are speaking about production anything in the natural i'm talking about of course it is a process and we have got to understand the process now we are prophetic people and we have to understand if i now add on the prophetic nature of this thing what is the prophetic nature what is what can i say about prophetic people well let me say to us right now prophetic people understand times and seasons i'm speaking to you behind this pulpit to teach you about times and seasons i'm here to speak to you as a man and a woman of god as as people of integrity the lord wants to teach you about integrity you see you cannot if i'm going to speak to you about production i cannot speak anything unless unless you are willing to be men and women of integrity and the third part is the the people who are prophetic are fearless they are bold they are brave they are courageous these are the people the lord wants to speak to i want to say to you that not everybody right now not every single person that i'm speaking to will be able to receive and will be able to understand what i'm doing what we are speaking about right now and i'm going to explain to you right now why that is so unfortunately unfortunately that is that is so let me let me give you a perfect example of production economics right now you know what's a perfect example of ppe prophetic production economics genesis chapter 1 because in Genesis chapter in Genesis chapter 1 the Lord God himself Elohim himself oh, come on the, the one who who had all the know-how come on in him all things consist come on he is all knowing he himself took and spoke and when he spoke he created in those six days he created the heavens and the earth and from that very uh, know how we got everything in the heavens and the earth my goodness that was the goods and the services that would come forth that is in essence genesis chapter one in essence is prophetic production economics it is it is it is there's no other way to express it even when you look at a uh, john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever would believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life when we even look at that at once again we see god giving and in and the process of god giving his son what was the reward what was the what came as a result souls precious one that is ppe and so if we could understand uh ppe then we already understand what the lord is going to be saying to us today you know i want to say something we spoke about know-how we spoke about that which is intangible and know-how let me say this what you do with what you know will determine your spiritual maturity because some of us know things or some of us believe we know things but but that is not that does not determine your spiritual maturity that does not determine your growth and your development what determines your growth and development as a believer in jesus christ is what you do with what you know because you may know some good things and you may know some not so good things but the lord is looking to see what you do with what you know and that will determine come on that will determine what will be whether you will be a fruit in it or not and that is going to be the foundation of the scripture that we have because our foundation scripture and i want you to pull it pull it up uh, it's it's amplified i'm going to go with for this part okay the amplified is hebrews chapter 6 in hebrews chapter 6 verse 7 here's what it says i love this scripture it says for soil that drinks the rain which often falls on it 
and produces crops useful to those for whose benefit it is cultivated receives a blessing from God oh my goodness I don't know if you heard what I just said there there is a type of soil which is produced on the earth that drinks that drinks rain there is a soil on the earth that drinks rain from heaven and the result of it is the process the process of it would produce crops that will be useful or beneficial for others or oh, you, you that's what is said so the question is which soil are you are you part of the soil where the rain from heaven comes down where you are useful come on where you are beneficial for somebody else you see we are speaking about production here because we have to be able to produce something you know there's a there's a scripture in Matthew chapter 13 verse 14 and and you know he was quoting from Isaiah and he says ever hearing but never understanding ever seeing but never perceiving there is a people who who would always come and would hear the word of God but they cannot have any understanding of what the Lord is saying they will see they would even see the miraculous nature of God but they cannot perceive what is the prophetic dimension of what the Lord is doing and we have too many of those people right now because that which I'm saying to you and that which I'm about to say to you is not meant for you to just have in your head but it is meant for you to apply in your life both in the natural and in the spirit let me tell you something the Lord is interested in your life he is interested in your family he is interested in your finances he is interested in your future and so don't let it be that you are all so spiritual that all you can do is just pray all day and from that prayer that that's all that is required no God wants to see you fruitful he wants to see you multiply and that fruitfulness and multiplication my goodness comes in every dimension it comes in your walk with God it comes in your holiness with God but it also comes tangibly in what you can do for the Lord in a tangible way now this is where I'm going because let me tell you something we are called to be rich soil we are called to be good soil I don't know how many of you remember in the in the uh, parable of the of the of the sower you remember that parable in the same chapter of Matthew chapter uh, uh, chapter 13 uh, uh, you know there was one where the soil itself was so stony that when the seed went forth and I want us to understand the seed that is going forth here is the rain the rain is symbolic of the washing of the water of the word the seed is symbolic of the word of God and so when the seed or the water in Hebrews uh, comes forth uh, into the soil the soil was so stony that there was no roots for it to go there was nothing that could done could be done because it could not go deep and uh, too many of us this is why we are hearing but there is no change in our walk we are listening we are seeing but we cannot perceive what the Lord is doing there is no change in our heart we are likened unto Pharisees we are ready to come into a church building or listen with stones in our pocket ready to throw and so there is no transformation this is why I said to you before you may have some knowledge or believe that you do it is what you do with that knowledge will determine your spiritual maturity uh, my goodness somebody needs to hear what the Lord is saying today somebody needs to hear not only with the, not only with the stony ground are you the one with the stony ground what about that other soil with the filled with thistles and thorns every care of the world come on the, the the riches of the world everything will distract you you have you have distraction after distraction that will prevent you from even receiving 
living and from even being transformed. Remember Romans chapter 12 verse 2 is one of the scriptures for this year. It says do not be conformed but be transformed. That comes out of the neuroplasticity of our mind. My goodness. And here we are in this place right now where the Lord tells us, I need you to be transformed by the spiritual uh, uh, pr production that is going to be birthed out to you based on the raw material that I have downloaded onto you. And based on the, the person, the character that I have given to you, God says, I'm going to give you the ability to produce and you will produce goods and you will produce services that would be beneficial to those around you see hebrews hebrews chapter 6 it was it was for the other people to benefit and in the other people benefiting precious ones we in we get the blessing that's what it says it says the blessing comes to us when the other people come on when the other people receive from what we have produced when the other people receive what are you producing so here's the question what are we producing well i'm just sitting down listening to a message praise god that's that's you know if i just do that you know the lord is blessed and you know as long as i stay quiet and i stay in my little corner and you know i'm good with god and but that's not what that's not our walk with god I said prophetic people no times and seasons prophetic people are fearless prophetic people are bold and brave what are we producing Come on, what are we producing? You know, it's interesting that in Hebrews 6 itself, in the, in the whole of Hebrews 6, it, it speaks about, and if I were to read from verse 1, it says, therefore let us get past. Here's what it says. I'm just going to go this part alone. It says, therefore let us get past the elementary stage. Imagine that. Get past the elementary stage in the teachings about the Christ advancing on to maturity and perfection and the spiritual completeness what is happening to the church precious ones before i could even go any further we are still at an elementary stage we have not even gone to secondary fathers tertiary education there are too many of us that just want elementary prophet don't give me all of this technology uh, uh, technological words and all of that just give me the plain word just give me the simplicity of the word that will bring the transformation for and here's my thing is it bringing any transformation or is it just feeding the the soulish realm because because if we are speaking from a soulish realm to you in your soul the only thing that is going to be birthed is emotionalism and there will be no spirit to spirit transformation and so the lord wants to get you and get me and get all of us in a place where we are sending the things of god because we have got to go beyond this elementary stage we have get we have got to go beyond it because when we go down in verse 8 because remember the scripture is verse 7 if i were to go down in verse 8 here's what it says but if it persistently produces thorns and thistles, come on, the rain, the rain that is falling, right? That is supposed to cultivate and bear forth, uh, uh, bear fruit and to be a benefit for others. If it persistently produces thorns and thistles, it is a worthless and close to being cursed and it ends up being burnt. What are we producing today? as the body of christ that's my question because let me tell you something production in the spirit comes from a prophetic word that is released from heaven into you you have to receive the prophetic word if if prophetic words are not received then there is no production that is taking place you have to be willing to to do something for the lord you have to understand what is my raw material what is my gifts what is my talent what are the resources that god has given to me come on besides to me my know-how my knowledge come on the wisdom that god has given to me the understanding that god has given to me besides that what can i tangibly do that i would be a benefit come on in the production line my god are you hearing what i'm saying because you're supposed to say at this point come on you're supposed to say wow wow my god i accomplished this by ppe you're supposed to say i helped this person by ppe you're supposed to say i i overcome fear by ppe come on we we are supposed to be so proud 
because of the prophetic uh, production economics based on the breath of the Holy Spirit working in our lives that we would get up and get that we would choose to do that we will choose to help with whatever resource we have God says get on the production line be a part of the solution not part of the problem you know too many of us are part of the problem right now we are engaging and purporting and promoting pervasive propaganda instead of being part of a solution instead of bringing healing to a nation instead of bringing healing to a people we have got to get up come on you better hear what i'm saying so let me go here now because in the natural in economics there are four factors of production Anybody who did economics will know this. There are four factors of production. The four factors of production are land, labor, uh, capital, and the entrepreneur, right? Most people will know this. The four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and the entrepreneur. Let us take that and let us apply it to our teaching today. The PPE of land, the PPE of labor, the PPE of capital, and the PPE of the entrepreneur. Write it down for me so that you will understand. The first one. <clears throat> the first one, excuse me. The first one is the PPE of land, <clears throat> which of course is the foundation. Now let's go with a let's go with a, a foundational scripture concerning land. And I'm prophesying right now to anybody who actually owns any land. If you're on any land, and guess what? I think that applies to all of us in one way or the other. Genesis 1.11 says, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, <clears throat> the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And so literally we are seeing where the Lord himself prophesied what was supposed to happen on the land. It was to yield. It was to yield. It was to yield. Land is profitable. Land is profitable. Land brings forth production. Come on. Production is critical in any establishment. And so land, come on. Even in your personal walk with God, production is critical. And so throughout scripture, we see land being that, that one thing that the Lord will use to bless. We know Abraham, not so? And in Genesis chapter 17, here's what he says. And I'm going to go down just to verse 7 and 8 in Genesis chapter 17. Because here's what the Lord says, says to uh, Abraham. Uh, that, uh, then his name changed to Abraham. Here's what he says. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in the, their generations. Are you, are you hearing me? Yes, in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, and this is what he says in verse 8. Also, I will give to you and your descendants after you the land. Say the land. Say the land. Come on. The land in which you are a stranger all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. The land did not actually belong to them then. They were, a for, they were foreigners in that land. Yet God prophesied. Say prophesy. Come on. We are talking about that which is prophetic. Prophetic production economics. And so God prophesied to him based on a word that he gave to him all the way back in Genesis chapter 12. If you remember, my God, is based on that, God now came to the place and prophesied to him because he says, you're not mature, you're not ready to do this, you're not ready to handle this. And he says, he, he begins to tell him, this land that you have, it's going to be yours. I need you to understand something. I don't know if you remember Jabez. Do you remember that guy Jabez where uh, the mother, you know, the, the birthing process was was so difficult the his um, own mother cursed him and and called him sorrow or, or you shall bring forth sorrow jabez refused to listen to his mother at that point in time i need you to understand something it is irrelevant who has cursed you let me tell you something is there anybody in your life who is cursing you now are you receiving that curse are you even cursing yourself? How many of us have had people in the past curse us? 
How many are having people right now cursing us? Everything we try to start, they curse it. They pull it down. Every, come on. We ourselves, we are cursing ourselves. How many of us want to start a business or want to start something, but we have already destroyed the thing we want to start by our own words? Oh, I want to do this, but I don't know. And I don't know if I should start this. And, I don't, and so we are literally cursing it before it even begins. Or we have other people uh, who are, we are allowing to pull down and destroy what the Lord has already built in our heart and birthed in our heart to establish. You see, Jabez got to the point where he could not care what his mother called him. He will not be called sorrow. And the Bible says in, in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10, it says in Jabez's prayer, because he prayed before the Lord. Oh, that you will bless me because everything that I'm speaking about is about a blessing, precious ones. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 7 speaks about blessing that will come. He says, oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. You see, Jabez wanted to God to enlarge the very borders that was given to him. No, I will not be a man of sorrow. I will not be a man that will bring forth pain and sorrow to other people i will be a blessing to others and the lord if i'm to be a blessing to others enlarge the territory that i have enlarge my business opportunity bless my hand that i may be able to sow a seed into somebody's life come on you better hear what i'm saying this is the production line this is production from the raw material it, but it comes forth of willingness in our heart jabez had a willingness in his heart jabez did not sit down and say oh my goodness i'm sorry woe was me self-pity self-pity throw a pity party on himself this is my life and i'm going to settle in this life and this is all that is no jabez got up jabez could kill us what his mother said Jabez could kill us what any relative said Jabez decided for himself I'm going to go with what the Lord has said what has the Lord said about me I'm going to pray to the Lord God what have you said what have you prophesied you see this is prophetic production that what is God speaking whatever the Lord is speaking that is what I'm going to go with in this season who is the Lord speaking to today this is the raw reality the raw reality is yes we will have to buy us and sambalats around we will have opposition but are we going to give in to opposition do we do we give in to opposition come on let me tell you something wherever there is pro uh, production god will bless <laughs> i said wherever there is production god will bless wherever there is production god will bless god wants to bless you you know what the raw reality is god wants to bless you that's the word I'm here to say to you. I mean, I'm listen, listen, you know what? My assignment is simple. You know, my assignment is simple for you today. I'm here to say to you that the Lord wants to bless you. He wants to bless the fruit of your hands. He wants to bless you because he wants to prepare you for a time to come. These cycles happen ever so often. I remember in, 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 uh, in what, when was it in the time of, in the time of, 2008 in the time of 2008 when things were really bad in America banks closing and all these terrible things happening the Lord had spoken and he says I'm going to prepare you for it five months before five months before God says this is what you're going to do be prepared and the Lord gave, gave such a blessing that prepared for months and months and months. Yeah, because, I, because, because I was in real estate. And you have to understand that when there is a crash, the first thing that crashes is real estate. All right. And the Lord prepared before. There was another time that the Lord prepared. The Lord prepared just back in 2018. Come on. When the book was written. And he said, get ready and start doing something and start building and building because a season is going to come. The season is going to come when there will be lack. S store up. Get a business going. Get something going. And I'm here to say to you, I, we thank God for that. Now we come to another season. Oh, I wish the spirit of the Lord will just reach everybody who's listening. That there will be no stony soil. That there will be no soil filled with thorns and thistles right now. Come on. That, that, the, so that the seed will not fall by the wayside. Come on, are you here with me? There is another season. Mm -hmm. The Lord is preparing us. 
He is, he loves us so much and he's preparing us right now. He says, I want to increase you and I want to increase you in the natural and I want to increase you spiritually with your walk. I need you to know my heart. And this is why this, the, the teaching after this one, God says, God says, even though I'm teaching you this in the natural, the natural comes before the spirit, the spiritual. He says, I'm coming now and I'm going to teach you truly about who I really am so that when the blessings come, come on, when the blessings come, you will know who I am my goodness according to Deuteronomy chapter 8 you will know who I am because I'm going to test you to prove what is in your heart come on you better hear me and so God says he wants to enlarge our territory he wants to enlarge our territory and all we have to do all we have to do if we study if we would revise if we would review what he's teaching us right now specifically not just oh nice word no no this is not a nice word this is a specific instruction thus says the lord he says if we would revise review it god will resuscitate those things that are dying in our lives whether it is your marriage come on whether it is relationships whether it is your business your job i don't know what is dying your health listen god says i'm going to resuscitate you just apply the strategies wake up get up uh, stop looking at the negative look at come on don't look at the negative in life look at the positive look at the things look at my goodness look at what i have done and so let's go to the second one amen the second one is the PPE of labor. What is the PPE of labor? And I'm going to very quickly give you three areas of the PPE of labor. You want to write these down for me, please. Of course, in the natural, when we speak of a labor, we are speaking about workers. Workers in your job, you being a worker in your own job, other workers in your job, in your business, or, or what, wherever, whatever field you are in, whether you're a doctor, a teacher, or whatever job that you are doing, the workers, the labor, of course, in the natural. There are three areas the Lord wants to reveal to us right now. The first one is this. According to God's original plan, man was made to work. Light bulb. Write it down. According to God's original plan, man was made to work. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to what? To tend and keep it. That was Adam's production line. Adam's production was to tend and keep. That was his process. All Adam had to do, precious ones, was to engage the process, be part of the production line, tend it, take care of it, protect it, because in it, if you tend and you keep it, you will be part, you will be covered in PPE. You will, like the, like the, 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 the workers or the healthcare workers and the hospitals and, and health centers and so forth, wearing their PPE, you will be likened unto wearing a PPE. You will be protected. All you need to do, Adam, is to tend and keep it. Work the land. Work the soil. Work it. Let me tell you something. Here's the problem. The problem with us is that we don't work because here's the point b the one who is lazy in a work brings destruction write that down the one who is a lazy in a work brings destruction no i didn't make that up that's the word of god the word of god says in proverbs chapter 18 verse 9 here's what it says proverbs 18 9 says he who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer so you become family with a, somebody who is steeped in destruction if you yourself are lazy let me tell you how terrible it is because what are, who are the people who are destroyers who will bring forth destruction because if you do not work if you do not do what the lord has instructed you to do in especially in this season which is get up and get use your hands now you're going to destroy your marriage you're going to destroy your family you're going to destroy your health because you can't even you can't even pay for a healthy meal are you hearing me you're going to destroy you're going to be part of a burden for your society 
because society now will have to take care of you and so and so the lord is letting us know in terms of our labor we cannot afford in this season to be lazy there has to be something that we can do whatever it is we can do i you know we, let me say this to us if we can we should if we could we should if we can we shall if we could we should and so the lord is saying the third point is dishonest labor will soon part for the believer dishonest labor will soon part for the believer you know this i said for the believer for the believer because dishonest labor has nothing to do with the unbeliever as a matter of fact the enemy will totally bless the unbeliever and keep them in a place of so-called comfort that they will feel as though they don't need the lord amen and the scripture is proverbs chapter 13 verse 11 and proverbs 13 11 um says this wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished but he who gathers by labor what is by labor by the strength of their hand that word labor actually means yard which means the hand by the strength of your hand will increase what is dishonest labor? Well, can I tell you something right now? We have in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of people who cannot uh, get any assistance from the government because their boss had not paid any health surcharge or whatever taxes they were supposed to pay for them. So they cannot even apply for, for um, financial assistance. That is dishonest labor. That is dishonest. You cannot have an employee listen to me i don't if you are an employer and you are listening to me and you are a believer in jesus christ and you have employees and you don't pay their 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 health surcharge you don't pay you are dishonest and so what is happening even though you get a feel you get a little blessed now there will come a time where god will just snatch it away from you because god says that, that dishonest labor will soon part from a believer another one you undervalue goods so let's say you're a business person or you want to start business and the people from the wherever you're important from or whoever you're doing business with, with they say listen we can undervalue the goods for you you don't have to you know you don't have to pay that that amount you know so that so that you will get more uh more benefit from it let me tell you something the moment you start to do that day one that you do that you've just been signed off by the lord are you hearing me because you're dishonest the third one you underpay staff let me tell you something about minimum wage and the believer in jesus christ there is no such thing as a minimum wage for a believer in jesus christ because there is no such thing as a minimum with the lord i said there's no such thing as a minimum with the lord god is a god of abundance and more than abundance and so if god says i want to bless you my goodness uh, to the point where you can't even imagine or think what i'm going to bless you with should we not more than that be able to help whoever at how much ever we can possibly help that person that we are employ we are employing are you there with me and if you are there and you want to eventually be a business leader a business uh, owner and whatever please understand that you have to be willing in this season to stand that straight and narrow path and engage and give that person that you're employing the most that you could possibly give my goodness god is speaking god is speaking and he says advertising incorrectly you you are you are advertising but you are dishonest in your advertising of your goods and your services and i'm speaking practical here i'm speaking practical because the lord is speaking practical to you you want blessing i can't speak to you about being blessed. this proof the lord cannot reveal blessings to you oh favor it's like it's like telling you you're going to be blessed but you don't tithe the blessings are going to come as you obey the instructions of the lord that's how blessings come amen amen and if you are part of a production line you have to know you know in you know in in factories and you're part of a production line and your in and your job is to just take a glass and put the glass on the conveyor belt my goodness and put a label on it and you are unable to do that one do you know the entire production line falls because of that one task and so 
part of the production line is this as one who is part of the PPE you have to be able to follow these steps because if you don't follow these steps even though it may appear that you're being blessed right now the time will come when the Lord will just remove remove the blessings and you will wonder oh my God Lord what have I done what have I done where did I fail you Lord and you will even start to blame the fact that I have been tithing all the time and so if I've been tithing all the time how come this is happening to me not realizing not realizing that it is about a heart condition that that giving and blessing and helping it's about a heart condition and being honest somebody needs to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying the third area is capital the PPE of capital come on let me see the let me see the likes and the hearts and the and, and come on the more you bless the more people see you, uh, you know, sharing and liking and, and, and just saying amen, it's the more encouraging they feel. You have to understand that. It's, it's an encouragement for other people. Amen? So, what is the PPE of capital? Now, capital, obviously, in the natural, is an important part of production in any business, in any establishment, in any organization, because it speaks of wealth, obviously. It speaks of wealth that is created by persons. It speaks of, of money and what is required. Production literally cannot take place without capital. All right. And so somebody's looking at me. Well, you see, that's the whole problem. Prophet, you said all these wonderful things, but we have no capital. You know what is interesting uh, with, with the Lord is that if you desire, you shall have. There is something with God where he gives us the desires of our heart. I don't know. It's just somewhere in the Bible. And when God gives us the desires of our heart, he opens doors and opportunities that we did not, sometimes we did not even verbally ask. Sometimes we didn't even cry out to him concerning it. Before, before we even finish the prayer, before we even finish saying exactly what we would we are want to ask of the Lord as Daniel did in Daniel chapter 9 the, Daniel's prayer was not even finished concerning a, pro, a prophecy that was given a hundred years before by Jeremiah concerning freedom and liberty let me tell you something God answered the prayer through an angel even before it was finished you see it was a heart condition and i'm telling you concerning capital if you need anything to start something it is a heart condition god will just cause somebody to lay something on their heart to bless you to help you or the lord will just open a door and an opportunity for you to start a job let me tell you something there are many people who want to start a business and I remember the Lord had given an instruction back in 2018. And he says, if you want to start a business, get a job. And use the money from the job to save and start the job on the side. Start the, 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 the business that you want on the side. Build up enough. And then eventually, eventually you can go full, full blown into that. Your own business, your own dream. And some of us right now, we, are, we, we don't want to do any job. We, we, just wanna, we just want the Lord to just bless us. Lord, just bless me. And I'm here to say to us, and I'm being very, very practical about it. Some of us need to get up. The Lord is saying, listen, the Lord is actually saying, get up. I don't know any other way to say, my goodness. And I'm saying it with all humility. I'm saying with all humility, the prophet of the Lord is saying, get up. Get up and move. Walk. Step forward. Do the work of your hands and watch and see the Lord bless it, says the Spirit of God. There are two areas of capital. There is there's physical and there is human capital. Physical capital in the natural literally speaks of that which is tangible, okay? Buildings, machinery, whatever. But if we were to look at capital, physical capital in PPE, physical capital in PPE would be our church buildings. Come on, it would be the money we need to, to maintain the buildings. Uh, a physical capital would be, would be the, the resources we need to go on social media as we are doing right now. That is physical capital. Physical capital is, the, is, is doing that which is to bless the, the, the ministers who are, who are preaching the gospel. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 14, here's what it says. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without the preacher? 
And so we have the need, the necessity to, to uh, minister, to, to be a blessing in terms of physical capital, if it's possible to just bless, uh, bless the ministry, bless the, the, the preacher, bless the, the building. And if you, if you have the tangibility of, of helping in any way, you help. Do you understand where the spirit of the Lord is going here? Now, when we speak about uh, human capital now, human capital is, is it's mind blowing to me and it is it is a literally referring to spiritual wealth the natural capital is natural wealth but human capital has nothing to do with natural wealth human capital is spiritual wealth of wisdom of knowledge of spiritual understanding that comes forth when we receive words like this when we do our training and our teachings when we join colleges when we study the word of god when we allow the spirit of god the, the spirit of prophecy the spirit of truth to come and teach us we do classes we do courses that is the human capital there is a nothing that can touch human capital are you there with me because it is the human capital that will touch lives it is the human capital combined with the physical capital that will transform nations capital is so important because we cannot have we listen to me let me tell you what's dangerous because we cannot engage in any spiritual capital because spiritual capital is untapped but spiritual capital without human capital knowing truth will cause many to go through and, uh, and scroll through social media and listen to the wrong things this is why we have to engage in truth this is why we have to study the word this is why we have to know the, 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 what the spirit of truth is saying to us this is why it is so important precious ones are you hearing me spiritual capital is important right now as a matter of fact as a matter of fact, it is the key right now to get the gospel out there. There are so many who are speaking the word of actually right now. Where when we are we are talking right now, there's so many right now, right now as I'm speaking, who are preaching the word of God. Just like just like I'm doing. There's so many. But some of the people, some of the people who are preaching, unfortunately, it's acid rain. It's acid rain that's falling. It's not, it's not the rain of the word of God coming forth from heaven. And it brings destruction to the soil. The thorns and thistles, it brings destruction. You see, what we don't realize is that the rain that falls from heaven, even if our soil was stony, where we have a whole set of questions, more questions and answers concerning the word of God, concerning the Lord himself. The rain from heaven, when it falls, if we are willing to know the truth, it can break it up. It can break up those stones, bring them into pebbles and break up those pebbles. Bring them into, into soft, rich soil, if we would so desire. The rain from heaven can take the thorns and thistles in the soil for those who have that we are so concerned with riches we are so concerned with with uh, uh, the cares of the world if we are one like that the rain from heaven can come if we are willing in our hearts it can cut and sever because the word of God cuts it divides it can cut up all the thorns and thistles. Do you understand what I'm saying? It can do that. If we are willing right now to say, Father, if I have a stony soil, if I'm made of thorns and thistles, if the soil inside of me is made of thorns and thistles or stone, then Lord, let it be God that I am not deceived. Come on. And I repent of it. Because Lord, I want to know truth. That when the rain falls, come on. When the seed is planted, it will bring forth a fruit. That's the idea, precious ones. So Hebrews 
chapter 6 verse 7 says come on let me go to it, it says for soil that drinks the rain what kind of soil are we which often falls on it and produces crops useful to those for whose benefits it is cultivated those people receive a blessing but if it is persistently producing thorns and thistles it is worthless lord we are not worthless and the last one the last ppe is the ppe of the entrepreneur in the natural in the natural any entrepreneur is a person who embarks on uh, any enterprise that produces goods and services for the purpose of making not just an income but making profits that's in the natural that's any entrepreneur okay let's 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 be sure that we understand that an entrepreneur goes into any business to make a profit amen in the natural now a spiritual entrepreneur is one who is willing to use uh, their resources their gifts their talents for the benefit of the gospel of jesus christ to go to the four corners to the four corners of the earth that's the purpose of it and the resources the resources that that person you and me the resources that we would have come on what are our resources our resources would be our our ability to pray our ability to intercede for one another that's a resource that we have our resources our time come on we want to spend time with somebody and help them through a matter or is it that we don't care about this person let us let us be willing to spend that time on online and, and praying for that person come on the services whatever we are doing even in giving money that's a resource but let me make it clear we have to understand something and, and i don't want us to miss this in the in the closing part of today's message you know in hebrews chapter 6 verse 7 it says everything that we are doing all those steps that we are talking about it is for those for whose benefit it is cultivated the benefit of us doing what we are doing in these steps that we are making the factors of production the benefit is for the consumer the be come on the benefit is for somebody else but in the benefit being for somebody else we are blessed oh hallelujah that's what the scripture says we receive a blessing from the lord so i'm going to tell you i'm going to close by saying to you and, and i need to say this okay the, the ppe of the spiritual entrepreneur this is the end what is the ppe of the spiritual entrepreneur three i'm going to give you and there are actually three prophetic words the ppe of the spiritual entrepreneur one think as big as you possibly can right now right now i'm asking you right now come on this is a this is a practical message even as it is even as it is spiritual even as it is prophetic think as big as you can right now right now right at this moment whether you're watching you know at this moment or you're going to watch this at some other time think as big lord let me just think the big that i could as big as i possibly can of what you have planned for me whether it is in terms of a ministry whether it is your you know your walk with god whether it is in a business whether it is something to do with your family think as big as you possibly can right now and understand this that god's plan is far more bigger than that the spiritual entrepreneur as big as the spiritual entrepreneur can think does not even touch what god will do for you you know the bible says in philippians 4 13 it says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and we look at that scripture and we think of it oh, you know i could go overcome this obstacle and i could overcome this hindrance and my god the devil is riding my back and i can overcome but let me tell you something it's all it's also very much in what god the blessing that god has for you come on you can do it if god has spoken it into your life think as big as you possibly can and that which you can think god says i'm going to give you more the second one is god is a more than able to support you that's the second one god is a more than able to support you the scripture in jeremiah 29 11, for i know the thoughts that i think towards you says the lord thoughts of peace are not evil to give you a future and a hope 
And then he says, come on, in Ephesians chapter 3, we know Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, here's what it says. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think, according to the power that works in us. God says, more than you can think, more than you can ask, more than anything, get ready because I'm about to, I'm about to bless your socks off. That's what he's literally saying. And the last one is, the last one is, be a risk taker. You're not hearing me. Be a risk taker. Even if, even if there is no guarantee. Be a risk taker. Even if there is no guarantee. What does that mean? You know, there is an irony in the word being a risk taker for a believer in Jesus Christ. Because the risk of stepping out to do anything, whether it is trying to bring healing in a marriage. Are you hearing me? Being the one to say, hey, I'm wrong. That's a big risk, you know. Because that will take a truly humble man or woman to say, I am wrong. That's a risk taker. Because there is no guarantee that the other party will say, I forgive you. As a matter of fact, it can very well mean, you see, I told you so. Not so? It can be thrown in your face over and over and over again. That's a risk taker. Being a risk taker with no guarantee, when you feel in your heart you want to start this little shop, you want to start this little business, but you don't have a guarantee of a clientele. You're not sure of customers, but you just have a deposit in your heart that you want to start this thing. Can I tell you something? The irony of a believer being a risk taker is this. There is no risk. Because once you are doing something that you know is right in your heart, that you believe is right in your heart, that you believe that the Lord, the Spirit of God has given to you, and it is something that can be backed up by the scriptures, it can be endorsed by the rhema and the logos. Are you hearing me? If God has given a prophetic word, and if he's, if he's spoken it in the, in, the, in the logos, then you run with it. There is no risk there. It is irrelevant what happens on the other end. Because even if the business, if it's a business, and that business fails, there is no risk there. You know why? Because you've learned something in the process of production so that when the next time you come with something you will improve life is built on that precious ones that is why that is why the very nature and character of god is revealed in times and seasons we learn of the lord we learn of who he is in times and seasons like this if we avoid these times and seasons if every time we avoid being a risk taker we can never learn him we could never truly understand his nature. We could never truly understand his ways. How can we truly understand his compassion if when if nothing happens to us? That our that our very blood is, is, is filled with ice. How can we truly understand? And so God is telling us right now, He says, Look at the raw reality of life. Look at the raw reality of life through PPE. Look at it through uh, prophetic uh, production economics and watch and see what I will do. We've looked at uh, R&D, we've looked at PRAD, we've looked at PEAK, we are looking at PPE, we are looking at the protection that God is giving us in the natural, so to in the spirit, the protection of production, the four strategies, and these are going to help us in the coming months. Next week will be the last one, will be the, 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 the teaching on, on sales, and God says P.S., Come on, God says, P.S., we're going to look at sales next week by the Spirit of the Lord. Just lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands wherever you are. Father, we just thank you for this word. 
thank you god that you're teaching us practically you we asked actually the lord for you to be specific we asked for you to give us the coordinates lord of what we are to do in this season father we thank you for the nine months we thank you for the nine months and for the birthing of business the birthing of a new relationship new relationships marriages rest restored father god uh, re restoration of, of familial relationships lord new business new ideas father god even in in jobs that we will step out by faith and get the jobs lord that you have already you've already put those jobs in place for each one of us god and we thank you father in advance for them lord for in preparation for what is to come for the two years thereafter and so father we understand the two years thereafter is adapt and adjust because you said we are to arise align adapt and adjust and lord we are in this period of perfect alignment right now and we are going to come into a period of adapting and then adjusting and lord today you are teaching us here to come to that place where we have the resources where we have the tools where we have god what is required father that we will not find ourselves in a famine lord we will not be in the famine we will not be in the drought we will not starve god but lord that you would provide for us because oh lord prophetically you have prepared us lord to be part of the production line lord thank you today and we bless you god for what you have already done and we bless you father god for what you are about to do in our life in jesus a mighty name come on let's give him praise come on let's give him praise come on let's give him praise hallelujah come on hallelujah we give you praise god we give you praise god and father god we thank you for that one who's watching there's somebody who's watching right now and you have a really really terrible uh shoulder pain very very bad shoulder pain and you keep doing like this you see so you're watching me but you have this shoulder pain and you're, you're doing like this and you're rubbing your neck or whatever father right now in the name of jesus uh, come on in the name of jesus uh, through the word of knowledge we touch that one lord the healing balm of gilead come right through into that person in the name of jesus let the rubbing of the oil rub upon that person that muscular uh, condition right now it's a muscular condition it's not saying it's muscular father in the name of the heat come upon them heal them right now in the name of a jesus and I'm, I'm sensing very strongly it has something to do with your bed and the pillow change your pillow uh, in the name of jesus it's a natural thing and god is going to heal you in jesus mighty name and so Charmaine Noel and I want to take this opportunity to invite you to attend my e-college. We will have topics such as spiritual leadership, the book of Genesis, the gospel of Matthew, prophetic praise and worship, prophecy for today, as well as pulpit ministry and much more. You will have an opportunity to have access to an e-library with well over 100 teachings, as well as an in-depth teaching of the book of Revelation. Click the link in the description and you will be in this e-classroom at your own convenience or live. We welcome you. Visit our social media or you can contact 1-868-303-2880. We welcome you.